What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Back at it, Hustler here. Uh, I'm actually playing in Mariano's private game today. So it'll be a lot of fun. I think we're playing like 5100, I think. And he's trying to host these like once every week. So happy I get to be invited. Mariano's obviously a good friend. And if you are around the LA area and want to play a fun private game, because it's good vibes, good people. I think like Maria Ho is going to be in and uh, Feldman, owner of the, of the HCL show is going to be in as well. So overall, very fun group. So if you want to be in, just DM Mariano. But uh, I'm going to hop in, splash around, and hopefully I do better than last time. Last time I lost like 35, 40,000. Today, hopefully a good day. Uh, let's get in there. I'm excited to play. Always fun to play some cash games, and I'm sure you guys always love seeing more cash games. So uh, we're in there. It's beautiful right now here in LA. It's great. Let's go get the cards in the air. All right, we're entering a very friendly environment, and well, not so friendly when the $200 straddle is on. We're playing 5100, 200 with ace queen offsuit in early position. I raise things up to 600 right off the bat. We get the small blind and straddler to call, so we're going to a flop of 10 5 3 rainbow. Action checks it over to me, and well, I don't have much, so check this one back. Turn comes an ace, though. Well, we're going to run good today, aren't we? Action checks to me once again, and now hitting top pair. Certainly going to bet, and I throw 1,000 out in the middle. Small blind ends up making the call, and the other player folds, so we're going heads up to a river, which is a six, not a heart, so the backdoor flush draw misses, and my opponent checks one more time, and it's a pretty easy value bet. Got top pair, got a good hand, certainly would be bluffing with lots of air ball hand as well, so 3,000 to go. And my opponent thinks about it for a while, and he says, screw it, I call. I show, and win versus pocket eights. My opponent was a non-believer, and right off the bat, we're going to win a pretty decent-sized pot. Things are going well. In the following hand, getting involved with the ace four of spades. We're on the straddle here, the $200 straddle. Mariano opens it up to 500 on the button. We get the small blind and big blind to call, and I really want to squeeze. I'm doing it because it's very fun to do so. Let's try to put our buddy to the test, and I squeeze it up to 3,000. Mariano decides to, uh, well, raise again to 8,000 without much thought. Oh my goodness. Action folds around to me and sticking to the plan of, well, I really want to five bet, but I can't because I, I have never really done that before. So I decided to just make the call for 8,000 more. So 16K at least in the middle and the flop is 10 deuce deuce, not even a spade on the board. I check it to him. He bets 5,000. I hate my life and I have to fold. What's cool is that Mariano ends up showing our, his cards to me and he's nice enough to show me King seven of hearts. What? An asshole. Goodbye to $8,000. It goes to his stack. But uh, yeah, that wasn't very nice of you. You can't really call yourself a friend by doing that to me. Hey guys, brief interruption to once again remind you guys that I'm selling some action on Stake Kings and I need your help to figure out how I'm going to play in this million dollar game that's coming up in a few weeks at the end of May. Hustler's hosting it. I'm bringing $1.5 million to play poker with. And I don't have... um all that money and it's pretty irresponsible if I played it all myself. So I'm selling action to you guys if you want a sweat. It's kind of like sports betting, but in poker, you have a direct sweat, a direct percentage of my wins or losses. So yeah, if you want that, check the link in the description below, statekings.com slash player slash rampage. I also posted a video on my personal channel talking about my thoughts about this whole staking thing and a little bit more education if you're not sure of how it all works. So click that video if you're interested. Secondly, pokercoaching.com is hosting a WSOP tournament series. So if you're coming out to Vegas or you just wanna learn more about tournaments, I'm an affiliate with them. They're the main reason how I got better at poker initially and how I learned some fundamentals about the game and started to not punt as much. So if you wanna improve your game, if you wanna learn more about poker, I think it's a really great opportunity to do so on pokercoaching.com. Click the pokercoaching.com link in the description below to check out more information. But uh, yeah, a lot of people ask me what resources do you use? And the first answer I always give is some online courses and tools and poker coaching offers all of that. So definitely worth checking out. And those are my two announcements. Let's get back into the video. Time to get some revenge and make some money back. I pick up King 10 offsuit in the button. There's an only gun raised to 300 here. Cutoff makes the call. I decide to flick in a call and big blind call. So multi-way the flop comes King 8, 7, 2 diamonds into spade. Flopping top pair, gotta love it. Under the gun, C bets $400. Action folds to me and I make the call and everyone else ends up folding. Turn comes the nine of spades. Brings in two flush draws now. And when the only player decides to check, I think I have one of two options here. I think I could certainly bet. 
or check. I mean, duh. But I think betting seems a little bit more bluffy. I think my hand really wants to check a lot of the time, but, uh, you know, I'm here to increase the size of the pot and gamble. So I decided to bet out $1,200 here, and I'm basically thinking I'm bluffing here with top pair, which is never really a great spot to be in, but when the Unigun player decides to check raise the 4,000, oh baby, this is when I start to turn on the recording of the video, and uh, I kind of like this situation now because I started to bet this turn as a bluff, and now I have the ability to go with a really weird three bet hand with a marginal top pair, but trying to turn my 10 into a straight. So trying to represent that, I said to three bet it up to 11,000. My opponent has about 40,000 behind, and I guess if my opponent calls, I'll just shove the river as a bluff, even though I have top pair. Trying to get spicy, but my opponent tank folds. Phew. Nice to get this one through. Not every day do you turn top pair into a bluff, or you probably shouldn't ever do that, to be quite honest with you, but uh, this one worked out. I ended up making a few extra couple thousand dollars from it, and glad that everything worked out this time, bouncing back from the King-7 disaster. Spicing things up, I put on the $200 straddle of this hand and pick up Jack-10 offsuit. There's a cutoff raise to $800, and I'm going to defend and see a flop, which comes 6 4 3 2 clubs. I check it over to my opponent, and he bets $500, and, uh, well, I'm gonna check raise. Why? Because it's a good board for me, supposedly, but do I have good cards? No, but that's never stopped me before by representing a good hand on a board that I have no piece of. I raise up to $2,000, and my opponent ends up making the call, so here we are to a turn which comes a deuce of clubs. Oh, this is perfect. Any fives is straight, and I think my opponent doesn't have any fives. And I certainly could have them. Also, the flush draw gets there, and I have a club in my hand at the very least. So I blast off $3,000. Let's just get a fold, please. And my opponent is sticky and stubborn. Does not end up folding. He does make the call, so we've got some resistance. Going to a river we go, which is the Ace of Diamonds. It doesn't really change the board, actually, at all. Any five is still a straight. All flushes are still flushes. And I decided to throw $10,000 here. And for $10,000, this could be a massive punt, but my opponent folds rather quickly, and I'm going to show my hand to the table because we're actually playing the stand-up game. I win this hand with a very, very silly bluff, and we're going on the right direction here, winning a couple hands in a row now. In the following spots, this hand, the beautiful natural nine. If you play Baccarat, you know the deal. Can't ever fold this one. Six, three of diamonds in the cutoff. There's an unigun player who limps for 100. I raise it up to 500, and I get the big blind and unigun to call. Three ways to a flop of king, four, four, two hearts. Action checks it over to me here, and I'm going to bet this one because why not? It can't win with six high, so I'm going to bet 500, giving myself the best chance to win, but, you know, not really a good chance when both opponents call. So this is not very fun. We're off to a turn which comes another four. Is there any chance here that both of these opponents don't have a king? Maybe they had a flush draw. Maybe they had, uh, had an ace or, you know, a smaller pocket pair. Action checks it over to me, and I've got six high in a dream. I'm going to represent full houses. I bet $1,400 here. The big blind, Maria Ho. Surprising guest here in this game. She makes the call. Other player folds. So we're going to a river which comes a nine. Maria starts off with a check on this river, and I don't think I can fold out a king. I mean, really, is she going to float with hands like pocket sevens or eights or something like that? Seems unlikely, so I'm going to check this one back and wave the white flag. And luckily I did, because she showed king eight of diamonds, wins with the full house. Definitely a hand I was never going to get to fold. Here we go, trying to redeem myself. I have eight four off suit in the big blind. Let me explain. We're playing another round of stand up here. So when the small blind raises to 500, it's myself and the player on my left, the straddler, our last to act in the stand up game. So if one of us wins this pot, then the loser of the pot will pay everyone at the table $500. It's a very big sweat. So for those reasons, I call the 500. And of course, the straddler, who has a lot to lose his hand, calls as well. So we're going to a flop of eight, five, seven, two clubs. Flopping top pair? I can't really be upset about this one. So when action checks it over to me here, I am going to throw out a bet of 500 with top pair. And you know what? The straddler immediately raises to $1,500, and I think he's full of it, because this is the stand-up game. If I fold, I'm going to owe everyone $500 anyways, and for $1,000, I'm certainly not going to be folding this one. I want to win this one. I don't want to pay everyone the $500 ante, so I make the call for $1,500, and we're going heads up to a turn, which is a king. I think overall, this is pretty much a brick. I mean, yeah, scary card because it's over my pair, but how often is he going to have a king here in this spot? So I check it to him, and he throws out $2,400. 
This hand's starting to get expensive now. Definitely can't go anywhere. I'm going to make the call here and hoping to somehow win. The river is the nine of clubs. Oh, disaster. Flush gets there. Straights get there. Everything beats me now. I check. And luckily, my opponent checks this one back and shows the 10 six of spades. Luckily, he checked back, but unlucky, he got there on the river with a straight. So I'm going to lose this pot, and I also pay everyone at the table an extra $500. So basically, it's like I lost a $3,000 river bet. But uh, yeah, just dispersed it to the rest of the table. GG's, I lose this round of stand-up. We've been playing some very friendly poker so far, but action's about to heat up. Picking up 10 Ada Diamonds in the cutoff, the $200 straddle is on. There's a hijack raised to 500. I make it 2,000. Small wine who didn't pay attention to the action actually calls the $2,000 raise. Seems like he actually wanted to raise himself, which makes things very, very tricky to navigate. But here we are. Small blind calls, hijack calls, three ways, two at the pot of 974 rainbow. Flopping open ended. Oh, baby. Action checks it over to me. And yeah, it is a little bit scary that the small blind wants to raise pre flop, but I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to throw out a bet of 3,000 with my open ender. Small blind now surprisingly check raises to 8,400. Other player ends up getting out of the way, and there's definitely some part of me that thinks that he has an overpair, but I know this player, he's certainly capable of having much worse stuff than just premiums. I make the call with the straight draw. Turn is the bink six of clubs. There's a backdoor flush draw possibility, but more importantly, I have the nuts. My opponent barrels again, this time sizing up to $12,000, and this is awesome. A little bit conflicted here. Do I want to call or do I want to raise? I decided to just make the call here and set the trap. I mean, it does seem really, really strong to raise here on the turn after getting raised on the flop. So we're going to see a river, which is the Ace of Diamonds. Really not an amazing card here. If my opponent had a hand like Jax or something like that, then uh, yeah, I don't really get a whole lot of action, right? Anyways, my opponent starts off with a check, which I hate to see. Would have loved to see him barreling, because I have the nuts, of course. And uh, this time here, I set to fire out $25,000. It's a big bet, but one that my opponent could certainly get a little bit sticky on and call, but to no avail this time, unfortunately, he ends up folding, and I finally get to win a pretty good-sized pot. Gotta love that, drilling the nuts on the turn. For one of the last interesting hands of the night, fellas, this is uh, this is a wild one. With pocket queens, I'm in the cutoff, and the $200 straddle is on. I raise up to $500 here when action folds to me, and we get the small blind player. Same player as last hand, he raises to 2000 And now, on to the $200 straddler, Mariano. He 4-bets to 6200 What is going on? We're playing pretty deep, like 70000 deep here at this point, and... Yeah, I'm gonna make the call for the 6200 and the small blind calls as well. Oh my goodness. Massive pot brewing here. Well over $18,000 in the middle, and we're going three ways to a flop of Jack 862 clubs. Action surprisingly checks to me, and I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Small blind here should have a pretty strong hand. The four better Mariano should have a really strong hand, and for them to check it over to me, I'm trying to make sense of it, and I decide to throw out a small bet here of $4,000. And here onto the small blind player. He doesn't take that much time before announcing a decision. And when you announce a decision, you know it's usually not that comfortable. It's an all in. He announces all in for $35,000. Holy moly, what in the world is going on? And when my opponent in the small blind here shoves, the other player in the straddle takes his time. Mariano, he covers everyone at the table. He covers me and he's tanking. What is going on? After some deliberation, after some time, he actually ends up announcing all in himself. What? We have two all ins in a four bet pot on Jack eight six. <sighs> With pocket queens in an overpair, what do you want me to do? Not really sure what's going on, but I'm not really confident that my hand is good. I mean, I guess someone could have aces and kings, someone could have jacks for a set. And I'm going to kiss my $10,000 I committed into the middle goodbye. Because clearly, everyone else wants to go after this pot a lot more than me. And we're going to see what ends up happening. A monster pot is brewing well over $80,000 here. And we see what happens. They run it twice. And I would have ended up rivering a set on the first run out. But the cards do end up face up. Small blind shows jack deuce of hearts. Top pair and a flush draw. And Mariano shows pocket aces. And they chop up my money 
Very weird one to lose $10,000. Maybe I'm just lucky that I didn't see a runout. So I don't know. I could have certainly lost a little bit less or I could have won with the queen on the river here. But yeah, very, very interesting. Not sure what to make of it, but that was over an $80,000 pot between Feldman and Mariano. And they just chop up my $10,000 I put into the middle. So everyone's happy besides me. But what ends up happening at the end of the night, we end up doing some flips for content or... I don't actually know what it was. Dentist Dave wanted to flip and here I am squirming at one of the largest flips of my life. But this one for $13,000 each, $26,000 in the middle. We're flipping for all of it and we're gonna go straight to the video. Fucking so dumb. Lauren, don't fucking do it. Stop throwing three over at the same time. Let me film you. Make it real sweat. Make it a real sweat. <laughs> well, we'll get both angles. I gotta get Dave. Here we go. That's such a dumb sweat. Here we go. Oh, oh God. We got a four. We got a four. A good start. We got, got, we got a king. King of spades. I got Ooh. a pair of five. Oh my God. We're like triple wrapped up. Oh, oh seven. I got a seven. Whoa. This is great so far. Oh, oh God. shoot. I oh, God. Got God. Keep going. Oh, oh, oh nothing. Oh, oh no. Nope, nothing. A nine. Nothing. Come on, Ethan. You could lock it up here. Wait, right? oh, no, there's, no, no. there's Deuce. Deuce gonna win the big no, one. No, no, Deuce is live for you. Oh, Deuce is wild. Right. What am I doing? Am I showing my, my card? Show card. Keep going, keep going. Oh, no, no, no. No, you're right. You don't my show seven yeah, is you don't. No, 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 no. Take the card over. Oh, Deuce, he wins. Most likely. It's, it's a ten ball. That's it. Oh, okay. <gasps> That's it, right? GG's. Oh, yeah, you lose. GG's. Wow. What you got? Let's go, baby. Oh, you got it all. A pair of sevens. A pair of sevens. Hey, wow. Hey, what a hustle. Lose five he, flips in a row. I was going to say, he won when he needed to. Nice hands. He won when he needed to. What a wow. hustle that was. All right, guys. Just got back home from Mariano's private game, and clearly there is just no shortage of action, whether it's from myself or everyone else at the table. Uh, just a fun game to gamble, and luckily I came out on the right side of that today in this one. As you know, these swings can get really big and I'm just glad I upswung just a little bit today. Uh, I was in the game for $50,000. Uh, I actually cashed out for $75,900, which is a good little uptick of just over $25,000. And uh, yeah, that's kind of a success to be quite honest with you. So like I said, a big shout out to Mariana for hosting and getting everything together. If you're interested, you watch these videos and you wanted to hop in on some of the action with your ever in LA, shoot him a message, King Argentina on Instagram. He has the blue check mark that he may or may not have paid for. Anyways, we're gonna hop out of this video. Thank you so much for sticking to the end. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in, in the next one. Thumbs up for the couch team. Let me know in the comments below.